Ja, nee, der Hacker. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Liam and I am one half of TheploymentZone.tv and if you are new here, you need to hit that subscribe button because YouTube tells me that near 50% of people that watch my videos at the moment aren't subscribers and we're rapidly approaching 14,000 subscribers and I think if we get to 15,000, I'll do some sort of monumentally huge giveaway. So hit the sub button and anyone who subscribes to the channel will be in, in, for, the, in for the prize. I don't even know what the prize is yet, but you'll be be in the draw somehow. I don't know how I'm going to make that work, but we'll make it work. So last week's video was actually quite negative, um, and I don't apologise for it because I always said that I would give honest reviews and I just wasn't sold on that box. In terms of the actual physical models inside, yeah, I think they're pretty nice. I'm concerned about the flayed ones and how they're going to go together, but the models are very nice. The models are really nice. I just don't think that box is incredible value. And there's a, th a number of things that people pointed out that I want to address very quickly before we move on to tonight's topic. First of all, people said that if you looked at it from a sole kill team perspective rather than a 40k perspective, it was better value. And yeah, I agree. It probably is. But it still doesn't have the core rulebook for kill team, so you still can't play it as a standalone. And people then have called it an expansion and corrected me on that one as well, which, again, you're right. But they did so rude. But they did originally market it as a starter set, and then they changed because they didn't have the core rulebook. And I think when I compared it even to the original Kill Team starter set with the scenery in there, and it had the Gene Steeler Cults and the Admech, I just still think that was better value. So I still don't think it was great value. And I understand that people were a little bit upset that I compared it to. Um, to um, Indomitus because Indomitus was such incredible value but the thing is Indomitus proved that they could do incredible value and I think that's the bit that people maybe were, were missing the point in that particular video and that's that Indom Indomitus was incredible value I agree and it was the best value box they've ever kicked out but it proved they can do it they didn't sell Indomitus at a loss remember that so they can kick out that kind of value. So I would like to see that kind of value applied to these massive box sets. If you want someone to pay near or over three figures in UK money for that kind of box set, I think value is something that should definitely be top of the priority list when chucking those boxes out. That's my opinion. That's that one. So you guys that made those comments, you're all right. And I get it and I agree. But I still, I still think my opinion of that box set stands. It's not one that I will personally choose to purchase. And I'm very, very fortunate that they did send me one because I wouldn't want to buy it. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video tonight is to be positive about things that are coming out and things that Games Workshop are releasing. So this is the, this is like a flip on its head from last week. We're going to talk about positive things that are coming up and positive things that Games Workshop are doing. And there's three different things that are three different sort of areas. So depending on what you want to do um, or depending on your interests, I guess, that this may be something that appeals to everybody. Um, and all three things I think are pretty good on the whole. Uh, so first of all, they're currently doing a series of new model Mondays, which I wasn't particularly fussed about last week, but this week they have showcased, and I'll put it up maybe here if I can, a picture of the new Bellacore model, which is just unbelievable. That thing is stunning. And if you've seen the old one and you now have seen the new one and you realise the difference in scale and size, they have the design team have smashed it out the park with this model. It is phenomenal, and it makes me a little bit sad that this year I've committed to buying no new Chaos models, and I'm sticking only with the current work in progress armies that I have. But it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do to get some armies finished. That model, however, is stunning. Massive thumbs up. If you haven't seen it in detail, go and check out the Warhammer, Warhammer community page. Check out that model. It's absolutely glorious, and I might have to buy one anyway. Maybe. Um, so that's that. That's the new model Monday. I don't know what's coming. I don't know how they're going to top Bellacor. He's just so good. I don't know how they're going to top that model. That is a super impressive model. So the next thing that's been sort of announced recently over the last, well, I say over the last week, but it seems that when I did a little bit more digging on Google, this sort of thing had been announced for a little bit longer than just a week ago. There's a bit more detail out there, but maybe it's just because I read it like two days ago. And they've announced a series called Warhammer Imperium. Now, if you guys are familiar in 8th edition with Conquest, it seems to be very similar to Conquest. And if you don't know what Conquest was, Conquest was a series of magazines that you could buy 
each, I want to say week, uh, but it might be a month, each week you could buy a Conquest magazine and it came with how-to guides and some background and stories and stuff like that. But it, it, importantly, it came with models and paints and what have you. And by the time you finish collecting the whole of Conquest, if you collected every single episode of that magazine, you had a basically a full-size Space Marine army and a full-size Death Guard army. Incredible value. Basically, I think you've got a lot more plastics worth than the magazine costs. So the magazines were free and the models were sort of discounted at the end of it. So it was a great series, and there are a load of people that use Conquest to build their armies up for the first time, and I thought it was amazing. Uh, and I was a little bit sad, actually, with Conquest that I didn't jump on it right at the start and hit that subscription button. And I, and I always sort of said to myself, I don't need Conquest, there's no need for it, I don't have any want or desire for these things. And as it kept coming and kept coming and kept coming, and people were having little chunks for their subscription coming out of their sort of bank balance and ending up these, I was a bit like, oh, I wish I'd done that. Genuinely wish I'd done that. So Warhammer Imperium has been announced, and it's a similar principle, I think, to Conquest, as as far as it seems like it's a similar principle anyway. And it's a, basically it's a subscription model magazine series um, that is week on week. And as you collect the series, or as you go through the subscription series, you end up with a massive Imperium army. And Imperium is is carefully used as a word rather than Space Marines because it's not just Space Marines because it's Admech. I think it's Sisters of Battle as well. And then you end up with an opposing Necrons army as well. And, and I'm really excited by this. I, more than I thought I would be. Um, so I've subscribed to it. I, I've, I've hit the button. You don't have to do this. You don't have to actually subscribe. I believe you can buy episode week on week in your local retailer if they sell it. But I've actually hit the subscribe button. And I did a bit of mathematics as well. Um, and I worked out how many episodes there were. And I can't remember the exact number of episodes or in the whole magazine series. And I think it works out in total at like £700. Which is a lot, isn't it? But that is over the course of a year and a half, I think. It's like 60 or 70 um, uh, episodes or, or uh, is it ep issues? 60 or 70 issues is, is probably the, or 80 issues or something like that. So it's near two years worth. Week on week, magazine, plastic coming through the door. £700 sounds super expensive, but you probably, looking at it, get a lot more than that in terms of your money's worth of plastic alone. Not to mention you get paints, painting guides, how to build stories, all that kind of stuff. So I'm super excited to jump on this, uh, and I have done it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because I had massive FOMO from Conquest, and I really wish I'd got involved in Conquest. Secondly, because I think that the model range is amazing, and I'm currently building Space Marines and Necrons as two armies. It's two of the three that I'm working on along with Tyranids. So there's a massive bonus to that for me as well. And, and also with Sisters of Battle and Admech, I've never really dipped my toe with those two. And, and I get stuff in this magazine series for free. I say for free, it's not for free, is it? It's a subscription. But you get the point. I get this stuff sort of chucked in at me anyway. And maybe it would nice to be able to maybe it would be nice to expand into sort of more of a generic Imperium army. And the Necrons has tons and tons of stuff in there that all looks pretty useful. Uh, the Space Marine stuff, there's a couple of things that aren't so useful, so they're hardcore down the Ultramarines route. So for example, I believe I can see in the picture Galliman and Kalgar in the Images because I can almost definitely see the Victrix on a guard. And for me, in my custom chapter, they don't fit. But I think I maybe feel less bad about hacking the symbols off and maybe trying to convert them for my custom chapter because they're coming as part of this magazine series. Who knows? So I like the idea that I've got those sorts of things to play with. Models that sometimes I perhaps wouldn't normally buy as well might be included. Um, they've got like the ATVs in there. There's lots of interesting stuff. Lots of interesting stuff in that magazine series. I'm super excited about it. And of course, it means that I can do some sort of regular content with you guys as well about how this is what we got in this last month. How great is this? Or how bad is this? But I'm hoping it's the former and not the latter. I genuinely think that in the end, if this is if you want an Imperium army and you like Necrons, or you've got a friend perhaps that plays Necrons and you want to split the price, genuinely think this is probably pretty good value overall. I haven't yet worked out. What I would love to do at the end of the Warhammer Imperium series is I would love to work out the value of the plastic included in the magazine series alone, aware of the fact that it includes brushes and pots of paint and stuff. But just the value of the models and work out the value of the subscription and see where that sits. That's a cool experiment, I think. I wonder if it's going to be worth it. Of course, I don't know definitely what the release is going to be week on week. We've got some indications for some of the earlier editions. So we know that edition one is going to have a couple of characters. I think it's a Royal Warden and some sort of Space Marine character. I'm not sure which one it is. I can't remember. Uh, issue two has three Necrons. Issue three has three Space Marines or vice versa. I can't remember which way around it is. Issue four has the Destroyers. Now, the Destroyers are going to be like a 30 35 pound box right so issue four that's nine pounds i think it's 8.99 or 7.99 let's go nine you get a 35 pound box of destroyers already thinking it's good value 
already thinking it's good value. If that carries on, that pattern carries on, I think this can only be good value for your money. And if you can afford it, and I'm very conscious of the fact that it is £8, I think it is a week, I'm sure it's 8 so you're talking about £36 a month, £9, £9 or £8, £36, yeah, it's £9 because I worked out £36 a month. So £36 a month to do the series it isn't for everyone because times are tight, COVID has been very cruel to people, so... I'm conscious that that may have been their biggest mistake, is pitching it as a weekly episode at £9 a week. I, but if the value's that good, then surely it can be justified. And this is me from the person who, in the last video, ripped them apart for value. And I actually think this is good value. I just wonder if the delivery rate is so fast that that means that it becomes expensive for people and they therefore can't afford it. But perhaps you've got the opportunity to sell the Necrons parts on eBay or sell the Imperium parts on eBay and, and perhaps then you get even better value and maybe you can justify it that way. I don't know. I'm so, super excited for the series. I can't wait to see what they throw at us. Um, and I'm hoping I'm hoping it encourages me to stick the subscription all the way through to the end. And at the end, we'll work out value models versus money paid. And that'll be a cool video. So the last update I want to cover tonight is the Warhammer 40k website. There's a community article on the community website about this right now. Head over and check it out. They've refreshed the front page for 40k. It, it's not specifically just the Games Workshop website. So if you just click the normal Games Workshop website, you basically go back to where you were. But the 40k front page, the 40k website has been refreshed. And it's actually quite nice. I quite like it. So basically... They've now broken it down. You can scroll down. You can you can sort of cycle through collecting, building, painting, playing, etc. You can go down. You can cycle through all the different factions. It gives you some lore, some narrative, some background. You can click on Shop the Range, and it'll take you to the normal Games Workshop webpage, which is the same old webpage that we're used to. Uh, you can go down. You can click on an interactive-ish kind of galaxy. I'd like this bit to be a bit better, but it's a start where you can click on the faction that shows you where they are in the galaxy. And I'd love the map part to be more interactive, so you can sort of zoom in and move around and see the names of planets and stuff. But they've done a refresh. It's really cool. They offer lots of background for specific factions. They allow you to, to build up a bit of a picture. So one of the pieces of advice I've always sort of given people when looking at starting new armies and, and what have you is to fall in love with the model range and, and look at the narrative and the lore and see if that sort of sings to you. And it's nice that you can do this without having to buy a codex and read a book. You can go on the website, read a bit into the narrative, read a bit into the specific dynasty narrative or the specific uh, shield, whatever the custodians things are called, narrative or uh, chapter narratives or whatever. You can delve into those um, narratives individually with little bits of information and, and maybe give yourself a bit of a flavour before you even take the plunge on buying a codex. Check it out. It's really good. I'm going to try and link the Games Workshop Warhammer 40k website below. Um, it's actually pretty good. I'm quite impressed by it. So go check that out as well. And, and that's good, right? There's three things we've just talked about. Bellacore, the Imperium subscription, and the new 40k website that are all positives. See? I don't just hate on them for views. Some people thought I'd done. That's three really positive things coming out of Games Workshop at the moment. And it's not just those things. There are more. But I like those. And I, and I genuinely, like I said already, I think the magazine could be incredible value, and that's why, I, and I'm not going to bring it up again too much, but that's why the Kill Team box for me is such terrible value overall, because that is, is such good value. Now, we did see announced for, by Games Workshop. No, have we seen announced by Games Workshop, or was this a leak? Maybe I saw a leak on the Tinterweb, uh, whereby someone had leaked the new Primaris Heavy Intercessor standalone box. And I don't know whether this is because it was always coming, or whether this is a reaction to the absolute slamming that they got from the community about the Kill Team Prior Nexus box. Don't know. Be interested to know. We'll never know. It would be interesting to know what the reason for that was. We would never find out, unfortunately. But it would be a nice piece of information to have to see if that's the way they've reacted. Because I think that if they've reacted by chucking that box out sooner rather than later, that's arguably a positive step. That's a, oh, we, we made a mistake here. We're going to try and fix it. Um, so I would love to know if that's the case, so so we can give them some credit back for that Kill Team box. But hey, if you are a Kill Team player, if you are a Kill Team fan, perhaps it's not such bad value for you. Perhaps that box is pretty good for you overall. I think if you go down the route of being a Kill Team fan and wanting the expansion, then the biggest issue or the only real issue with the box is the value, uh, not the value, sorry, the balance. The balance between the two is is very off, um, and uh, maybe that's the major, the most, the, the biggest sort of complaint you can have, I guess. But otherwise. Positive for Games Workshop this week, right? Positive. Okay, cool. I think that's all I've got to cover at the moment. And I'm not doing a No Retreat Legends video. I'm not. Sorry, Pardo. 
Nobody else talked about me in their No Retreat Legends video at all. No one else. No one else talked to me about talked about me in their No Retreat Legends video. So I'm not going to mention them. Not any of them. Oh. That's that's it. Anyway, we are in March and it is time to get excited. I know we were in March last week, but it's time to get excited because we are very, very close to the launch of the Play on Tabletop series that is exclusive to DeploymentZone.tv. Um, can't wait for that to go live. If you're not already a DeploymentZone.tv subscriber, head on below, hit the link, subscribe to the website, uh, get loads more 40k content as part of your subscription package, including Play on Tabletop coming in just under, just over, just under two weeks' time. Yeah, just over two weeks' time. So head on down to deploymentzone.tv. Check out the battle reports for Winters. He's done a combat school series, which is insanely popular. He's doing Salt and Learns Tau. There's some sit and talk stuff in there. There's some army showcases. There's loads of stuff on deploymentzone.tv. There's no reason not to be a subscriber. And if you are a subscriber, you do get access to our free Discord channels. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can pledge on Discord as well. On Discord? You can pledge on Patreon as well. And that gives you full access to Discord. Other ways to support the channel are to hit the Element Games links below. Our deploymentzone.tv web store is in Element element games if you click on that you can go on and check over you can go on and check over you can go and check our amazing deployment.tv dice it's um, it, i know it's monday but it's been a long monday and i'm really tired you can go on to element games website check out that this is easy i just i'm just gonna give up i'm just gonna uh, there's no point basically go element check element look for dz dice on the web store buy stuff we get commission. This is how it works. Yeah, if you hit up Element Games, if you use the link below, it's an affiliate link. They know you came from us and we get commission for all of your purchases and you guys have been phenomenal at supporting the channel um, and actually having the web store in there has been amazing. The dice have been flying off the shelves. So check them out. There's some awesome colours. There's some white ones. I don't even have the white ones. There's white ones in the web store. Go check them out. Uh, finally, if you want to have a glorious beard like mine, you can head on over to The Beard Struggle. There's a code below for discount. LTDEMPS20 gives you 20% off everything on the Beard Struggles website and I've used these products for well over a year now because they're just the best ones out there. Quite frankly, there's nothing better than those for this in my experience so far, which isn't huge, but I've stuck with them because they're good and you get 20% off. What's not to love? Make sure you use that discount code though. Otherwise, you won't get 20% off. You're paying full price and does anyone pay full price nowadays for anything? Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Thumbs down if you haven't. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.